Hi guys, welcome to another Flight Deck 2 Sim tutorial. In today's video, we're going to talk about the different takeoff flap settings for the 737-800 using the PMDG NGX. Now, there's five different flap settings you can use for takeoff in the 737. You have flap 1, flap 5, flap 10, flap 15, and flap 25. Now, for any of you who have watched my previous tutorials in which I've conducted a takeoff and departure, you might have noticed I always use the same flap setting, that's flap 5. That's because it's the most optimal flap setting for departure with regards to performance. It gives you good short field performance and good climb performance as well, ensuring you're clear of all obstacles. But how do we actually determine which flap setting to use for takeoff? Well, it's all to do with the performance, guys, okay? Now, pre-departure, we use our electronic flight bag and the Boeing onboard performance tool to determine the maximum permissible mass for takeoff. Now, on a multi-engine transport jet aircraft like the 737, there's lots of things that might affect your maximum permissible mass for departure. You might be takeoff field limited if you're taking off from a short runway. You might be takeoff climb limited if there's an obstacle on the departure. You might have other factors like brake energy limits and tyre speed limitations to think about if you're taking off some, from somewhere which has a very low density altitude. And unusually you might have other factors like uh, runway strength limitations or what's known as PCN, perhaps if the runway's just been recently resurfaced. Um, of course, we must also ensure that we never take off more than the certified maximum takeoff mass of the aircraft. Now, to increase our performance, first thing we could probably try and do is increase our takeoff thrust setting all the way up to the maximum of 26,000 pounds of thrust. We even have an option to do the no engine bleed takeoff. But what else we can do? We can actually manipulate the flap setting depending on whatever is the most limiting factor for takeoff. Now let's give you a couple of operational examples. If we take uh, Bristol in the United Kingdom, that only has a 2,000 meter runway, which is quite short for a 737-800. And you can see here, if we use the most optimal flap setting of flap five, we can only lift 68.7 tons, which will not be enough to get you uh, on a four and a half hour flight to the Canary Islands for your summer break. Okay, so what could the flight crew to increase your performance? Well, they could use a higher takeoff flap setting. And you can see if they take flap 25, they can lift an additional two tons. They can take 70.7 .7 tons as their maximum permissible mass for takeoff. And that was because it is a very short runway. With flap 25, you can decrease your takeoff roll and rotate sooner. Now, let's look at another operational example. Let's have a look at Salzburg in Austria for runway 15. Here we have a 2,700 meter runway. And you can see here, despite the fact the runway is so uh, long, for flat 5, we can only lift 65.7 tons. In this case, we are takeoff climb limited. That's because there's obstacles on the departure. Now, we can increase the maximum permissible mass for takeoff when we're obstacle limited by decreasing our flap setting. And you can see with flap 1, we can actually lift 66.9 tons, which is more than 1.2 tons than flap 5 was. That's because in the event of an engine failure, we need to ensure that we're clear of, uh, of all obstacles. And by using a lower flap setting, we can improve our second climb segment climb performance to ensure that we're clear of any obstacles and get to the minimum flap retraction altitude sooner. Now, I don't want to bore you much more with all this ATPL uh, performance stuff. You can find all this information online. And in essence, in reality, when we use the Boeing OPT app, we might not actually know what is the most limiting factor, but we do have paper charts as well in case we don't have the OPT app working. So now we've discussed and determined the most optimal flap setting for departure and how we calculate it, let's talk about the takeoff flap retraction speed schedule. Now you can see here on this table from the flight crew training manual, this is the takeoff flap retraction speed schedule. And all you have to remember is, for all the takeoff flap settings except flap 1, you initiate flap retraction at V2 plus 15. Now this speed is very easy to recognize on the PFD because there's a little white bug there, okay, above the V2 speed, which is 15 knots. And then we initiate the flap retraction at that speed. Now, using flap 25 as an example, you can see we select flap 15 at V2 plus 15. We select flap 5 at the 15 bug, one at the five bug, and then we select flap up at the one bug. And this is the same for all the flap settings with the initiation of the flap retraction of V2 plus 15. For flap one, all you have to do is select flaps up after reaching the flap one speed. 
Now, so I don't bore you with just theory today, let's do a couple of takeoffs just for some fun. So we just um, completed boarding for a simulated flight from East Midlands to Tenerife and the Canary Islands. And all we're going to do is conduct two takeoffs. We're going to use one with flap 25 and one with flap 1, just so we can compare the two and see the differences. So for the first takeoff I've selected flap 25, you can see it's in the FMC there, and I have a V1 of 136, VR of 136 and V2 of 143, which is set on the MCP. And you can expect when we do the next one later, flap 1, we'll have higher V speeds. Now, you can meet me on the runway, runway 27 for departure, and we can do a takeoff, we can retract the flaps as per the, uh, the flap schedule I showed you, and then we'll do the flap 1 takeoff afterwards. Okay, so we're now lined up on runway 27 for the first flap 25 takeoff. We have been cleared for takeoff, so check that the heading matches the track. 269, 269 timing. Already stood the, the uh, thrust levers to 40%. And there it goes there. Let's stabilize, push toga, set takeoff thrust. Using live with a little bit of crosswind from the right here. So, takeoff thrust set indications normal. It was just full 24k today. Light forward pressure. And the V1's a lot lower, obviously, with flat, 20, uh, flat 25. 80 knots is checked. Release the forward pressure on the control column. V1. V1. Rotate. And rotate. Rotation rate's the same for all flap settings, 2 to 2.5 degrees, up to 15 degrees, and then onto the flight directors. So, pause the rates, gear up, we'll pop the PFD up here so you can see clearly the flap retraction and retracts. Uh, taxi light off. Forward feet, verify L nav, pitching for the flight directors, trimming slightly. And this is an NADP2 departure, so I'll just engage the autopilot at 1,000 feet. And you can already see we're already at V2 plus 15, which is the white bug. So, gauge your autopilot, so command A, and bug up, and we're already above the flap 1 bug, we can select flap 15 straight away. As soon as we're above the 15 bug, there we are, we can select flap 5. As soon as we're above the 5 bug, here comes flap 1. Match the heading for the turn. Just above the one bug now, we can select flaps up. And that, guys, is the flap retraction speed schedule. Just match the heading on the turn. The reason we do that is if ATC say straight away, maintain present heading, you can just push heading select straight away. Waiting for the flaps up leading edge flap transit light to extinguish. There it is, leading edge flap transit light is extinguished, so flaps up, no lights. Engage VNAV, and we then set standards. Uh, confirm the passing altitude and the cleared flight level and aircraft accelerating to 250 knots and then we complete the after takeoff checklist. Okay chap, so back on runway 27 I've reloaded the um, saved panel state so we've got the exact same amount of fuel um, everything else is identical and the weather's pretty much the same. The only thing I've changed is the flap 1 departure flap setting. Now if you remember previously, you can see the FMC there on the left hand side with flap 25. You can see now the increase in V1 and VR of from 136 knots before and we now have 148 for V1 and 149 for VR. But what you might notice is a much better climb performance due to the, the fact there's a lot less drag with flap 1. Okay. So having cleared takeoff, uh, we'll start the timing. Now set the thrust levers to 40% and confirm the heading and track again, Once, uh, 269, 269, bring the PFD up here again so you can see that. So timing, set takeoff thrust, and all we need to simply do is select the flaps up at the one bug. Here we go, takeoff thrust set indications normal. Eighty knots checked. Rudder on the centre line here. V1. Rotate. There we go. Two to two and a half degrees per second. Let's get the nose going up now. There we go. 
airborne at 15 degrees and then the flight directors post rate gear up a little bit out of trim here and you might be able to already notice our improved climb performance here oh my joystick's a bit sensitive uh, confirming LNAV taxi light off onto the flight directors and you can see look at the climb performance compared before uh, much higher so command a bug up and we're doing almost 5,000 feet per minute the flap uh, the thrust setting sorry was exactly the same as we had before with flap 25 okay there you go water pipes engaged bug the up speed aircraft pitching down now and we're already at 3,000 feet pretty much now there we go and we haven't even uh, reached 190 knots so we haven't even started retracting flaps so you can see how if there was an obstacle close to the runway on departure using flap one really improves your performance in that, uh, that sector so above the flap one bug we can now select flaps up match the heading we'd already had the flaps up no lights called by this point on the last departure there we go, leading edge transit, flap lights out, so flaps up no lights, set standard, engage VNAV, and now we can do the after takeoff checklist. Alright guys, the after takeoff checklist is complete and that is the end of the takeoff flap setting, departure, flap retraction, speed schedule tutorial. And that's a bit of a mouthful, but I hope you got the gist of what was going on. Um, if you haven't done so already, appreciate the like and subscribe if you have any questions feel free to leave that in the comments section and as we come to the end of 2017 just want to say a massive thank you to anyone who subscribed in the last year um, it's really been uh, interesting I love giving you all this information and some of the feedback I've had is fantastic you can expect plenty more content in the future I might even look at some other aircraft but because I fly this tin can for a living and I teach people how to fly this tin can for a living it will always revolve around the 737-800 anyway Fly safe and I'll see you again in the new year. Take care and bye-bye.